board button. Okay, good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good afternoon, depends when you are. Um, welcome to today's session on IronViz. We are the Athens Tableau user group, and we're going to um, kick off this session. If uh, you don't know who we are, uh, which is uh, totally fine, you don't know who we are, or you have not seen our faces before, we are um, these three people. I am the person on the far right. So who we are, we are a bunch of people passionate about uh, Tableau and we um, help facilitate those Tableau user groups because we want to meet other like-minded people to share our knowledge, passion and ideas. So my name is Angelo, I will be your host for today. I am a training consulting analyst at the Information Lab UK. And I'm joined by Eleni Gika and Adonis Agelakis. Eleni Gika works as a business analyst at Ross Diagnostic Alas. And then Adonis is a BI analyst at Scrooge. And they are the people who are doing the heavy lifting in today's session, watching out for the Q&A, uh, monitoring the chat and making sure that everybody gets what they want. So please feel free to ask to them, uh, to, to reach out to them if you have any uh, questions, either directly or through the chat. And what is the Tableau user group? Well, um, I'll go through that very, very quickly. So um, it's a community thing where you can join a user group and connect with other people that use the software, that use Tableau, and you can go and share your experience, learn new things, and explore the possibilities of um, Tableau. Typically, um, the rule is that you should uh, organize a user group every uh, two to three months. We push towards uh, two months, so we have uh, a single session every two months. Um, this won't be the case for summer. So this, this is our uh, final session for the season. We're going on holidays to enjoy the summer uh, in Greece, but then we will be back in September, um, mid of September probably with our next session. And today's session is about uh, IronViz. So what is IronViz? IronViz is the world's largest virtual data visualization competition. And if you have, if you're active on social media, you would have seen that the announcement for uh, this year um, IronViz competition is out. And then the topic is about things you love. So you have to create a visualization about the things you love. You get to pick the topic and then the winner gets a prize, but also you get to learn along the way. Of course, I don't want to say anything else about IronViz because I don't know anything else. And we have people here that they do know uh, much, much more things than I do. So many more things than I do. So today we have um, Tim and Ethan uh, who join us and thank you very much for joining. So um, Tim, he was a judge in last year's uh, IronViz competition. And then Ethan has been a finalist in IronViz Europe. And let's talk about each uh, of them. So Tim has been working with um, Tableau for quite some time now. His first version was uh, Tableau uh, 7. So that goes back to 2014. And he has consulted and trained a range of clients uh, whilst working for the Information Lab UK. He runs his own YouTube channel and you can go on YouTube and find it. It's uh, under the name Tableau, Tableau Team, where he serves um, Tableau explainers. And then apart from that, Tim is also a Tableau Zen master and Tableau ambassador. And he is going to uh, start those presentations. And then the second presentation of today is from Ethan. So Ethan is currently working as a data visualization speci specialist at Primark. He started his Tableau journey in 2017 in Greece, and since then he has worked as a Tableau consultant for companies like Everton FC, um, Expert HR, and Eagle Alpha. So as I mentioned, Ethan has been a finalist in IronViz Europe competition, and his visualizations have been published in data visualization books such as um, Makeover Monday by Andy Cribble and Eva Murray, uh, How Charts Lie uh, by Albert Cairo, and uh, The Big Picture by Steve Wexlers. And having said that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Tim. I'm going to stop presenting. And Tim, you can uh, take over. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks for the intro as well. Um, let me just share my screen. 
Uh, everyone let me know uh, once they can see it. Uh, let's not start by judging my vis. Let's start with the beginning of the slide. And uh, I'll just go into full screen mode here. Um, I won't be in presentation mode the whole time, but we'll start off here. Okay. So yeah, I'm Tim and I'm here to talk about the judge's perspective, essentially. I was a judge last year uh, for the Iron Viz. Um, I'll go into that in a bit more detail just to sort of give some context there. Um, but essentially what I thought I'd do is um, talk about the experience from a judge's perspective, because I think there's uh, a lot of people who take part, but it's actually... Uh, there are not as many judges who take part, essentially. So I think it's also useful to know what kind of mindset judges are going into this with. And I'm going to just try and share some maybe pointers and things to be aware of um, when you consider that a judge has to look at multiple entries, not just your entry. So how do you how do you sort of cut through the noise, as it were, and um, get your vis to stand out? Um, the first step is, is it sounds obvious, it sounds really, really simple, but um, if I just think back to last year, I had to judge um, uh, 25 visits. So not every judge sees every vis, I'll come to that in a second, but I had to look at 25 visualizations. And of those, um, I think about 15 to 18 actually fully understood the process. And you can tell they knew the process because they'd obviously gone to the Tableau website, but had a look at how things work. Um, they'd done simple things like made their viz downloadable so that you know, someone like me could go in and actually figure out if an image was being used in some places or if it was actually you know some really uh, well done design with the chart in, in other places, right? Uh, all of that makes the judge's experience uh, much, much better. So if you follow the guidelines as set up by Tableau on the website, then essentially you're going to make the judge's life much, much easier. I'm not saying you have to cater your viz to the judges. That's not really what we're here to do. We're here to tell stories. But if you follow the instructions, then it's going to make everything a lot easier for you. So get familiar with the process, understand, you know, when the deadline is, understand the things that have changed year on year. Last year, um, we had a feed arounds and there were themes for each of those feed arounds. This year, um, you can use your own data. So uh, the challenge is, I think, maybe tougher now because everyone's going to be visiting completely different stories um, from different data sets. Okay, so really understand the process, really get to know the process. Um, if you have any questions, always be sure to just ask people in the community. So many people have done it and so many people are doing it that if you have a question, then it's probably not been answered. So don't be afraid to ask the question and just get some help. Um, if I go to the next slide, uh, on the Tableau website, there's actually a really good FAQ of the frequently asked questions. So these are uh, pulled together from lots of questions and submissions. And actually, 90% of the sort of questions you have and the doubts you might have are probably answered through this FAQ. And uh, these are just the questions, and you click on each one of these, it expands to give an answer. And the answers aren't long, they're just, you know, three, four sentences. But they're, again, really useful context for making sure that your submission, uh, you know, comes in on time. Um, they make sure that your submission is set up correctly. And also, it makes sure that, um, you know, if you do progress, um, to further stages of the competition that you stand a good chance of making it to the final, right? And then, of course, one thing that, you know, over the years has evolved a lot is feedback. People always want to know, well, if they didn't get into the final few visits, um, can they get some feedback? And actually, um, as part of the process last year, every judge will have some sort of feedback on every viz, whether that's uh, one sentence or a whole paragraph, um, they will have an opinion. And so what Tableau does do is they sort of collect that from a range of judges and they try and summarize it. But sometimes your feedback and your score will be slightly different from what you see in public, just because they're trying to sort of aggregate all these perspectives. So again, just understand the process so you know what you're, gonna, you're getting into, you know what you're gonna get back and you know sort of what to expect. Now, there's also these resources. Um, so this is sort of the last of the slides where I sort of point you to some Tableau resources. Um, there's a blog post, there's some, uh, you know, on-demand webinars from last year's um, and previous year's champions as well. Um, there's also sort of lots of activity on, on how to actually, you know, make a good viz. And these are, some of these are old, some of these are new, but again, they're just really useful uh, points of context. Um, we, we have a sort of community that every single week does lots of competitions, lots of sort of uh, things. You know, we have Makeover Monday, Workout Wednesday, Something Tuesdays, right? Like there's so much going on and it's actually very easy to forget that um, the context for each of those is different. The reason why we do each of those 
things is completely different. Makeover Monday is about enhancing your skills and using the same deaths, data set as a whole, you know, whole group of people. Workout Wednesday is about problem solving, solving a challenge and achieving the answer exactly as the answer has been described. Uh, Ironviz is completely different. Ironviz isn't any of those. It's actually a combination of a bunch of things that need to come together. So uh, don't approach this with the perspective that you've seen other people build visits in the community. Um, really understand what this uh, competition is is about and so it makes sense to then go to the judging process so i pulled this text from the website because um it, it's funny because actually you'd expect the whole judging criteria to be this you know really long arduous document and and so on and so forth and, and it kind of is but it isn't um this 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 short piece of text 100 percent summarizes the way the judging is done and it doesn't look like much but what i'll do is i'll break it down for you and sort of help you sort of understand it so i'll just go through this very quickly a panel of judges comprised of tableau ambassadors uh previous let me move this zoom thing out of the way uh, previous ironviz finalists data viz experts and guest judges will evaluate all submissions based on the following criteria design storytelling analysis three very simple uh, criteria um, then the final paragraph analysis will be the tiebreaker in case two visitors have the same overall score. Okay, so in the event that you know your work is great and there are two people who are sharing the same position, analytics or analysis is actually the primary driving factor that decides who makes it through. So um, analysis is always sort of the, the thing we're trying to improve in our visualizations, and I'll come back to this in a second. Um, if you then still have the same score after analysis, then it will go to another panel of judges. This is different from the first panel of judges that looked at your viz to make a final decision. So there's always a way of making sure that um, a range of people's perspectives are sort of uh, reviewed to get to the final score for your visualizations. And so if I sort of get my highlighter out and I sort of mark this up to sort of, uh, you know, treat this like a little bit of a, a comprehension exercise or something like that, if we just go back one, I've highlighted in yellow the things that should really, really be important, okay? Um, each viz is analyzed by a panel of judges. And what this actually really means is um, you're going to get different people with different opinions about how something uh, works, whether it's design, storytelling, or analysis. Um, there is a general guide given to all judges about how to go about scoring things. And actually all judges go through like a scoring uh, exercise. So we don't just sort of turn up and start judging things. We do go through sort of a little induction of how to judge and, and how to do things. So everyone has been through the same training. It's not just sort of a cold exercise, but nevertheless, even two judges who've been through the same training might score something slightly differently because they perceive something differently. We're human beings, we have perspectives. Uh, and that's why there's a panel of judges for each visualization. Secondly, you might sort of hear that there are, you know, 20 or 30 judges, but not all 20 or 30 judges look at your visualization. So it's normally a group of four to five uh, that will probably look at your viz at some point throughout the process. And there's multiple stages of the process, but essentially um, there'll be a small group of judges that initially look at your viz and give it a general score. If there's any doubt after that, it goes, yeah, it goes on to another group of judges. So bear in mind that, you know, if you're building your viz for INVIS, you probably want to you want to go out and get some feedback from friends and peers in the community because if you don't go through that process of getting that feedback from other people you might miss things that are so easily picked up when someone else just looks at your work it's so easy to just you know have your head down in the sand and work on something get really passionate about it and be sort of really really positive about it but then because you haven't sort of socialized the idea with people you find that you forgot some really small detail or an assumption you made about how people use your dashboard is actually incorrect when you show it to a slightly different group of people and um, so just just think about how how to do that now the other thing is the, the the judges themselves come from a whole range of different backgrounds so you have tableau ambassadors previous INVIS finalists data viz experts and guest judges now the reason i highlighted this is because this sort of mix of people generally starts to define something I call taste. And taste is like a, it's one of these artistic sort of things where um, it changes from year to year. So every single year, there'll be a common theme in the data viz community that I think will catch on. I think in the last year, um, there's been a lot of uh, conversation about equity and fairness in society. In fact, today Tableau released uh, a really good guide written by the Urban Institute on this topic. You should go check out, but there's always a theme. And so so this theme is always typically top of people's minds. So 
whilst you have a very big range of different people, it's actually really important to make sure that when you build your visas, you're actually in touch with the common themes that this community of people have been sort of tackling this year, because it's going to be at the top of their mind. So if you're building a viz that happens to touch on social issues, absolutely go out and check that you've not sort of, uh, you know, unknowingly uh, built something that, you know, could, could, could cause a challenge to a judge who maybe uh, has been very deep in this topic. So just, just sort of check your, check your tone, check your language, make sure all those things are, are sort of, um, you know, tight. You don't have to, you know, break your back to do it. There are lots of great free resources you can go to um, to do all of that. So just understand your audience and understand what's going on. Okay. Uh, and then the, the next thing, if I go to analysis, analysis is fundamentally the key driving force of how uh, this competition is judged. Um, I, th I think it's really important that a, a company that makes uh, an analytics tool has analysis as the deciding factor <laughs> across visualizations. So um, in, the way to look at this is, you know, if you took away design and storytelling, does your analysis on its own stand up to the strength of an, uh, scrutiny? And if it doesn't, then you really have to sort of take away design, take away storytelling, and just focus in on how is this visualization that I'm building analytical? How is it enabling someone to see and understand the story as Tableau's mission is, right? And how is that working? Okay. And the final point, which is the panel of judges make a final decision, that, that is out of your control. So sometimes people can get really tied into, okay, who are the judges? What do they like? Don't worry too much about that because by the point you get to that stage, I think everything's out of your control and you just have to be sort of proud of the work you've done. So just really focus on the three things they, they sort of really touch on, design, storytelling, and analysis. Uh, make sure you listen to your audience and make sure you're aware of, you know, the current tastes and discussions happening in the community. Um, uh, that's pretty easy to find out. If you go to Tableau's website, there's, there's normally a page that has all these uh, blog posts about this issues. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to do is <clears throat> just touch on each of these in, in, in a little bit more detail, because as you start to go through uh, the judging process, you realize that everyone has a slightly different understanding of the same thing. <laughs> so when I, when I look at design, and I'm going to be totally upfront, this is my uh, sort of summary of these points. Uh, another judge might come in and completely disagree with me. But generally speaking, um, when I look at design, uh, looking across a group of judges, it's not just aesthetic design and taste that matters. You know, yes, things when they look beautiful, a little bit uh, easy to consume. Uh, yes, when things are, you know, in good taste, then they, you know, help tell the story better. But actually, you need to really think about functional design. And functional design is 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 a is a strange one because you know um, Tableau, you know, build a very good tool. And if you just use a standard out of the box, uh, you know, functionalities, then they you're generally going to have a pretty you know easy to use uh, visualization. But that's not what this is about either. This is actually about when you decide to put a filter on the page. How is that actually helping the storytelling and the analysis? You know, when you decide to choose a color to uh, put on your legend, is that color uh, a good color to be using to, to, to show people the differences between things? Do you even need color? What, why did you choose that color? You know, all these small things which seem aesthetic, but actually have a second purpose, which is to help one of these other factors, which is storytelling and analysis. And that's just a really important thing to bear in mind. Um, if I move on to storytelling, um, it's, it's sometimes in Tableau, what you tend to find is that uh, there's this narrative that there's only a few ways of telling a story. So one of the most common things I've seen a lot is, you know, the really long, tall dashboard that goes from top to bottom and you have to scroll a long way and you read your story from top to bottom. The other one is from left to right, a really wide dashboard where you keep scrolling uh, a long way. Uh, the other storytelling devices I've seen are, you know, circular visas, so, you know, visas that start, you know, at the top and then they go round and there's some sort of timeline in a circle. Uh, and all I sort of want to do here is highlight that, look, there's lots of ways of telling a story. You don't have to rely purely on very high visual technical skills to tell a story. You could do something as simple as using the storytelling uh, functions in Tableau, uh, which is quite limited, but actually lets you do a lot of things if you really understand how that works. All the way to just, um, you know, 
using sort of subtle devices that you maybe get in literature, for example, progressive disclosure, like you don't have to, uh, you know, tell the conclusion of your story at the end, you could actually start it at the beginning, and then fill people uh, in on the story as you go throughout your visualization, right? All these ways of storytelling from other disciplines, like, you know, art and history, all these things are really useful. So really think about bringing that into your design, and use the design and analysis to sort of help that talk. And then the last thing is analysis. Um, I put this in again as a sort of repetitive point. Don't forget the fact that Ironviz, um, it, it, you know, comes from a company that is an analytics company that sells an analytics tool. who has a mission about helping people see and understand data. And you know, if you haven't really engaged with that mission from Tableau, it's actually a really important thing because most of the people who take part in uh, Ironviz are Tableau customers, and Tableau customers typically buy into Tableau's mission. So it's no surprise that if you dig into Tableau's mission a little bit. So if I go to, I took the screenshot off the Tableau homepage. Uh, you know, this is literally what on the page that says why choose Tableau and it says Tableau helps people see and understand data and when you dig into that a little bit it goes into this statement which I think is really really important and it's actually I think the driving power behind the analytical capabilities in your viz and analysis uh, and if I just read this very briefly building a company that fundamentally changes how people see and understand data requires a different philosophy so Tableau founders imbued their company with the disruptive points of view okay and on the right hand side, you've got this point about liberating data, empowering people and designing for people. And where this comes into analytics is so often you'll see visualizations that are just, you know, technical marvels, absolutely beautiful. You look at them, and you go, how on earth did you do that? Yeah. But once I actually start to understand how that works. If it's taken me a long time to understand how it works, then you've got to ask yourself whether you've really empowered that person. Because if you've made a visualization that's hard to understand from the beginning, is that empowering to the person who's looking at it? And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If it is empowering, then you need to really invest in the mechanism that you use to show them how your viz works. So sometimes just having a viz there and expecting them to read your tooltips isn't enough. You might need to start with a little very simple diagram that shows how your viz works, invest in educating them on how your viz works, empower them to read your viz, then sort of bring them into your visualization. Okay. Um, liberating your data. Um, you should make it easy for people to navigate your data. And this is again, going back to analytics. It should be easy to sort of browse and really understand data. Once I'm in the flow of understanding your viz, it should be easy for me to sort of work my way through it and get to the answers that I'm, I'm trying to get to especially if you started your viz with a question, okay? Never assume that uh, just because you've uh, given your viz a particular topic and question that the audience isn't going to want to go, isn't going to want to go down different paths, okay? So a lot of visualizations are very linear. They, they only allow you to do one thing. And those aren't great because it, it tends to sort of constrict the way someone's thinking. Really good viz uh, will tell a story, but will let someone go off track and come back to the main point of the story, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll show you, I'll show you a bad example of this in a little while with one of my own visits. But you know, these three points here on the right are so, so important, actually. I think they very nicely sort of summarize how to really nail that analytical point um, that Tableau talks about in sort of their judging process. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do in the remaining sort of six minutes, we're going to judge my 2015 attempt. So I wasn't a judge at this point. I was, this is, as you can see, this is a year after I started learning Tableau. Um, so let me, let me uh, come out of, uh, let me stop sharing and come out of uh, this. Actually, no, I do need to continue sharing because I need to go into the browser my apologies um, and click on this if I click on this will the browser open up um, so let's let's go out of this that didn't work so let's try this again okay so uh, that's okay fine that did not work how I was expecting it to work so we'll do this Okay, so I'll just go to Tableau Public. What's going on here? Oh, I think my computer's freezing. Can everyone still see my screen? Uh, yep. Okay. You can see your browser, yep. Yeah. 
Interesting. Okay, let me um, let me stop sharing. I think it might be might be PowerPoint that's causing the issue here. So that's this is very strange. Okay, uh, save. If, um, uh, sort of uh, judge everything. I think I I've put the um, link in the chat, um, Angelo, so you can just use that. Oh, uh, yep, I can. Yep. Got it. Perfect. Good. So. Um, all right, let's see. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so if you go to the very beginning of this uh, viz, I think it's dropped you in one of the tabs rather than the beginning. Uh, so this is my 2015 uh, entry. Okay, and um, now looking at this as a judge, I can sort of walk you through sort of the challenges that I have. Okay, so immediately um, you land on the home page, and um, to be honest with you, lots of judges look through a bunch of different vizs in quick succession. So if it takes a while to get into your viz, if you're not helping the judge sort of understand your viz immediately, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. And here, what I did is I was trying to sort of just simplify the story and uh, give them a single question, which is what kind of music do I listen to? Okay, that's a simple premise of the question here. Um, but the point here is that I sort of put the question, but immediately there's no answer. And actually, if you go through to the next tab, um, you know, what I, what I try and do is I try and take the viewer through a conversation by showing them how I've answered the question, what parts of the data that represents. And again, if you go through to the next slide, um, you really have to work hard to actually get to the point of my visualization. And um, it's not really clear immediately what I'm trying to do with the visualization. So um, a simple way I could have improved this is at the very beginning, you don't have to go back to that, uh, Angelos, but at the very beginning, what I could have done is I could have very simply explained, listen, uh, this is the question I'm trying to answer. I'm going to take you through how I've answered this question in the past, and I'm going to do it using this method, okay? And that immediately lets the user know, okay, this is what's about to happen. This is the investment in time that you need, and this is how it's going to work, okay? And now if we go through to some of the other tabs, you can just go to the next tab. Um, you, you can see that I try and get deeper and deeper into the story. And what I'm really doing here is I'm using the same viz multiple ways to sort of show you how to cut that. And each of these vizs is interactive. You can actually go in and work with them. But if you can see at the very bottom, uh, if you see at the very bottom in red, I've got the little hint. Now that hint is so small that you might just miss it altogether, right? It's so hidden and it's so not obvious what's going on. So uh, the the really sort of interesting thing here is that um, it's hard for someone, they're clicking through the tabs at the top, then at the very bottom, what I've done is I've told them that there's another way of interacting with this. And then you realize that, oh, actually I can start to interact with this. And then you start to listen to stuff. And so this is where Angelos discovers that I listened to the Spice Girls 38 times at some point in the past. So, <laughs> so um, you know, this, this is just uh, like a very simple thing, like be really clear about what you're trying to get the user to do. OK, um, if you carry on, um, if you carry on, eventually I found some attributes. And so at this point, I could have really cut out the next four slides because all I'm doing is I'm walking the person through the process of data prep. But this isn't this is this is sort of I and Viz data prep edition. This is I and Viz. So I don't need to sort of walk people through all the data steps that I took to get to the answer. And so if you keep going um, to the right, keep going. I'm afraid not to miss a part of the story, so I'm just going. To... There's there's not much in the story, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, you see, I go into all these other topics, which are all great, but each of these these charts, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually getting to the point. So the other thing is, you know, when you tell a story, you're not supposed to, uh, you know, make the best bit and put it somewhere far away, right? Um, so if you go to this one, I think this is the one that I actually want. Yeah, comparing all attributes. Things, right? Yeah. So I believe this is where I should have actually started with my visualization because um, this is actually the viz that actually tells you the answer to the question 
um, you know, what music do I listen to? Because what I was actually trying to focus in on is what kind of music do I listen to? What are the attributes of the music that I like? And so this visualization immediately answers that. And so if you just think about storytelling in general, um, when you ask a question, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to leave the answer until further on, but then you've got to keep people interested all the way through. But in this case, actually, it would have been better if I presented this and then I walked you through the analytical process if I wanted to later on. Uh, and then that's optional. You don't have to go through that. And also, I think this in terms of design is one of the few places where the design and aesthetics and the, an uh, the analytical capabilities are all sort of working together. All the previous ones, um, the analytics was great, but the storytelling was poor or maybe the design wasn't great. And here's a visualization where it actually works really, really, really well. And then if you go to the next slide, Uh, you then get a, a slightly more nuanced view of the first few. And what this one does is it just takes the top 25 artists and it just creates that line. And so what you can start to see, you can see the different shapes of different artists over time. And so this is actually um, a much better story than anything that came before it. So you have to have clicked through 15 slides to get to the point of my story, okay? And it might be that there's not much in the story. Maybe it's not even uh, sort of worthy of Iron Viz. But the point here is, is that there was a story and I completely buried it. And so if I then start to judge this, um, if I judge my own thing and on analysis, design and storytelling, well, on analysis, um, I think I'd, I'd sort of comfortably give myself a three and a half out of five. That's the scoring range is from one to five. So I'd comfortably give myself three and a half out of five. I think the analysis is good, but it's not, there's no no sort of killer analysis here there's no aha moment that you look at this and you go oh wow okay that makes lots of sense okay in terms of design well on on you know out of five i'd probably only give myself two and a half because although i've used you know story story points to the best of its ability and back in 2014 this was like brand new so of course i used the newest thing that was available it actually isn't a great device for storytelling i could have just done this in maybe four or five visualizations and spend a lot more time just really focusing in on this story here um so in terms of design the design is not helping the storytelling and it's also quite simple there's no sort of finesse to the design i've just put a bunch of story points back to back and i've laid them out you could you could essentially build all these as separate sheets and and it would do the same thing so there's not much sort of effort going there in terms of design so two and a half out of uh, uh five for design and then the final point which is storytelling this is the way i really dropped the ball although i did have a story i don't think i told the story in the best possible way um, now, that said, I did make a big effort to tell the story. So it's obvious that I'm trying to guide you through a story. So in that case, I'd probably, maybe being generous, I'll give myself a three out of five because I haven't completely just lost the point and not understood that this is about storytelling. But at the same time, there might have been a better mechanism to tell the story. And I don't think I chose the best one. Okay. So what is that? Two and a half, three, and uh, three again. I think, is that correct? Did, did I remember those scores correctly? I think I did. Um, so you add all those together and then you essentially get my score out of 15. Okay. And that's basically how you'd, you'd, you'd score this um, as a general thing. And so the other thing is, you know, one of the things I'll do as a judge is, is I'll actually download the workbook. Um, so if you come out of full screen, Angelos, and just, you know, um, as a judge, when I go to a viz, we get given the links to your Tableau public profiles. So uh, when we go to your profile and I hit that download button, and if you hit download, yeah. And uh, if the workbook isn't available, I get frustrated because now you've denied me of, an, uh, of a way of helping you uh, in a way, because if I can get to the workbook and see how you've done something, I can generally give you the benefit of the doubt. But if I can't see how it's done, what I have to do is I have to be conservative. Okay. I have to be conservative because I can't see what's being done. Um, if you looked at this visualization, you might think it was an image. If you'd never done radial bar charts, yeah, you might think it's an image. So, if I've also put like a container over the top so you can't interact with it, I'll sit there thinking, was this done in Tableau or not? And there's nothing obvious here, apart from obviously it's a Tableau workbook, but I could have just put an image inside of a dashboard. So the only way for me to sort of figure that out is to download the workbook, get into the sheet and actually see that, no, you've built a trellis diagram with different charts on the page and you've somehow managed to make the labels work. Okay, great. Wow, that's really cool. And now I understand a bit more about what you're trying to do. And that's important because it just helps it helps the judge understand what analytical sort of devices have you used to help your story a little bit.
Okay. So that's a very simple guide. I, my viz is by no means sort of, you know, iron viz worthy. It was just, it was just my first attempt. Um, and uh, it, it's just sort of an insight as to how I'd critique this if I was doing it again. And so if I was building this again, what would I do differently? I'd get rid of half, maybe more than that uh, of the, of the tabs. I'd keep it to just four or five. I'd put it all on one page. I'd start with the question. I'd get straight to the point and then I'd, I'd basically try and walk you through um, the answers, sort of the analytical work I did in the previous slides. And that would have been a much better, uh, a much better, better uh, sort of way of doing it. And you, there's one more tab, which says musical travels, which is completely random. I didn't like, <laughs> this is like uh, you finish telling a story and decide to add a paragraph to the end of it. It's completely unnecessary. Okay. So um, just think about sort of these things. I, I, maybe it's unrealistic going through one of my own visits, but when I'm judging, this is absolutely how I go through this. And one other dynamic just to be aware of is that every judge has multiple uh, entries to go through. And if they are judging, let's say 10 in one sitting, you just want to make your viz uh, as easy for them to go through as possible. So Unfortunately, I've only listened to one artist who happens to have been born in Athens. I don't know who that is. We can find out, Angelos, if you're interested. Uh, so, uh, I'll find out at some point. I'll let you just, know. Just follow the instructions. It says uh, use the map search and zoom functions. So it just zoom. Yeah, zoom. there you go. <laughs> it's right at the bottom there, isn't it? So you, it's hard to even find that. But yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. that's it. I, I don't have I don't have much more um, on that. I just thought I'd sort of give that sort of high level overview, and hopefully, hopefully that's been useful. Of course, feel free to ask questions um, now as well on you know later on on Twitter as well if you have any more. So yeah, great. Um, thank you, Tim. Um, any questions from the audience? There are no questions from the audience. I have a couple of questions. So, Perfect. Tim, uh, mm -hmm. so you work with um, story points, and Valadi said in the chat that back then, I mean, first of all, back in 2015, yeah, uh, Tableau Desktop was a totally different product, and then yeah. of course the software has evolved uh, so much since then. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah. Uh, so you said that story points were very cool because uh, they just came out back then. Yeah. Um, is this something that you would suggest to somebody who wants to use story points for their visualization this year? Because as the way I see it, um, you're trying to tell, to tell a story and mm -hmm. with story points, uh, you're looking at some charts, some graphs yeah. of visualizations, yeah. but then you mm -hmm. might have seen something at the back. And then right. you have to, if that's on Tableau Public, I have to go back here, click on it. Exactly, yeah. And then I have to go back again. Yeah. The same yeah. goes, of course, the same goes for like very long dashboards. But mm -hmm. I don't know, what's your what's your take on that? What, yeah, what? so there's there's a couple of challenges with story points. Um story points in the current implementation is a very linear way of thinking. So i always think in the world there's two kinds of people: the people who are linear, who start with a question and then find a single answer. And then the people who are non-linear who will start with a question and they'll find many answers, right? They go through many different paths to arrive at many different answers. Uh, story points is very much a linear way of getting from A to B. I'm going to lay these things here for you to for you to navigate this the way I want you to navigate this to get to the answer. And that's not necessarily always the best, especially given the topic. Um, if let's say you're doing a visualization on weather and you're trying to, or some, something like climate change, you might actually use a linear chart because the facts are non-disputable. The facts can, you know, all come from the same place, weather data, and therefore, if you're telling a story about weather, it's it's reasonable to apply a linear storytelling method because um, you might just be telling a story about the facts. Once you start becoming subjective, you might want to break away from the linear method and start to give people more ability to browse the data. So I think that's how I'd separate those two things. Don't use a story point if you want to tell a story that needs to allow people to jump around, right? And um, if you want to tell the linear story though, then a story points is I think um, an okay device to use. Okay, great. And then for those very long task boards, I think this mm -hmm. is like a trend uh, nowadays, right. like people tend to go for very long task boards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is there another is there a pattern have you have you observed that there is a pattern in those submissions um, or so yes it, long dashboards are i think i think they're a design challenge i don't think they're necessary and this may be controversial but i have i've yet to see a long dashboard 
that couldn't have been adapted to fit on the screen, right? Given some alternative design choices. Now, I, I get it in some cases. So the long design format, I'm someone who's very much into design and the long design format actually came from web design where what they did is, you know, scrolling used to be a pain and someone thought, what if it wasn't a pain and it turned into a device? So they started, um, the, the best examples I've seen is something called the parallax effect, where you start at the top of a web page and as you scroll down, things change on the page dynamically as you're scrolling. So the good example, if you go to the Apple website and you look at new version of iOS, as you scroll down, uh, things will sort of uh, scroll and change slowly as you're scrolling. It's sort of linked to your scrolling. And so this has come into data is, except for in Tableau, we don't have all these sort of nice uh, D3 and JavaScript tools to do all this nice animation for us. We just have a static sort of canvas, as it were. So as you're scrolling down, um, you're making it hard for someone just to see the whole entire story in one place because they have to keep going up and down. So I think, in my opinion, this is my opinion only, um, only use a long story format if you really have to use this, the long story format, right? Um, because on mobile devices, maybe scrolling down works, but on a wide screen, you know, most of our screens on desktops are wide screens. They're designed to go from left to right, not up, down. No one turns their screen vertically and starts scrolling things vertically, right? So those design choices exist for a reason. I think just try and listen to those. But that's not to say don't do it. I think have fun with your visas, make them exciting however you want. But just bear in mind that you know design choices are really important because um, you know some people won't even scroll. You'd be amazed how many people don't even bother scrolling past the first page. They just look at the first page and move on. It's very, very common that for that to happen. So you might even have a viz where people don't see the main point of the story you're trying to tell if you've done the story at the end. <laughs> yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, I think there is there is a, a question from the, yeah, Adonis, do you want to ask the question? Uh, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, I just want to, to make uh, the following question. Uh, if uh, there are some, uh, let's say, red flags on the dashboard, uh, mm -hmm. which... Uh, act negative uh, to the judgment process. Let's yeah. say that, uh, let's say that uh, bright colors or uh, stuff right. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and in your opinion team, but uh, in general, maybe the judgment teams are uh, aligned with some red flag uh, <laughs> uh, techniques. So right. Uh, right. I would be glad if, if you can share uh, with us some uh, traps to, to avoid in, in the yeah. dashboard. Yeah, so the best, you know, there's, there's a couple of things. The first one is um, the, the Tableau community, uh, especially Tableau themselves, has specific guides on data viz best practice. The least you can do is to not break any of those guidelines. And if you do break those guidelines, you know, really show that you're doing it deliberately because it helps the story. There's nothing wrong with breaking rules. That's how great art and design is achieved. It's only when you break the boundaries do you discover new ways of doing things. That's In fact, that's what we see all the time on Twitter. You'll see Lindsay Poulter do something with set actions that isn't a feature, and now suddenly we're all trying to do it, right? Because she's broken the boundary, but why she's done it is really valuable. So when you look at, you know, going doing a red flag, don't just do it you know, for no reason, really ask yourself, if I cross this boundary, if I cross this line, is this helping the story? Is it helping people see and understand data? And if it is, then, you know, do it nicely, do it with taste, find the most, um, uh, you know, neatest way of doing it without sort of offending people. And, you know, sometimes even call it out. Yes, I used red and uh, green, but the reason I've used red and green is because I know my audience has no one here that is colorblind, right? So if you do do those things, be intentional. Don't sort of do it out of ignorance because you haven't done the, the research. Um, the other thing is, look look at guidelines. You know, data viz is now at the point where it's, I think it's now a mature practice. I think five, six years ago, it wasn't as mature and these sort of principles were still being developed. But in today's world, literally today, and considering Tableau's moved on a long way, especially in terms of technical capabilities, um, it's really actually, it's possible to do a lot of things you couldn't do before. So always make sure that, when you think something's not possible, just check. Just check and see if someone has done something because there might be a nice way or an elegant way that someone else has found of doing the same thing that is also, again, in good taste. And that 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 is a subjective thing. Taste is not an absolute thing. There's no sort of universal taste language or whatever. But I think it's just important to uh, sort of bear that in mind. And actually, um, there's a question here about prioritizing the use of new features. Um, 
don't just use new features for the sake of it, right? Use the new features if they help your story, if they help enhance what you're doing. There is sometimes a tendency, for example, I fully expect lots of visualizations uh, this year to use lots of set actions and lots of the you know map layers capability. And my, my view on map layers is it's, it's for mapping, right? So if you're going to break the rules and use it for uh, visuals and do layers of visualizations on each other, really make the use of that useful and make sense so much so that i'll look at it and i'll think that should be a feature in tableau you've gone out of your way to do something because that should actually be a native feature in tableau and that's a good way of doing it that's sort of a happy medium great jeff is happy so thank you <laughs> thank you thank you Timothy, for no also uh, keeping an eye on the chat thank you very much for the presentation really really useful um, no worries no worries Let's uh, move on. Ethan, are you good to go? Yeah, good to go. Okay, over to you then. Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Okay, just give it a second. Yep, it's good. Works now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, hi everyone, and thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Ethan, and I'm going to present uh, around this time of the year again. So, um, I'm going to take you through uh, basics, the basics around the competition again, and uh, how how we could prepare for it, um, and the basic the main reasons why you should consider entering Iron Vis this year. Uh, so, uh, Angelos already did the, uh, the introduction, so I won't take you take your time uh, mentioning uh, who I am and what I do. Uh, I just go through uh, what are we going to cover in today's session. So, uh, it's split into in three parts. Uh, we're going to answer the questions. Uh, but what is Iron Base? Uh, who can join it? Uh, when it when is it uh, happening? And uh, where you can find more information? And uh, in the second part, we're going to look at uh, the main reasons uh, you should consider entering uh, the qualifying competition. Uh, and finally, uh, I'm going to share my views on a few of the tips uh, uh, on how to get most of your uh, entry there. Uh, so what is IronViz? So IronViz is actually two competitions in one. Uh, in my opinion, uh, there is a qualifier competition and then there is a final. So the qualifier competition uh, is a completely different story because you have so much time to, uh, to create your visualization and uh, uh, build your entry while in the final, uh, it's a completely different context. Uh, so uh, you have just 20 minutes to compete on stage or virtually uh, based on the last year's experience uh, as part of the keynote uh, session in the Tableau conference. So just to take you through the pre-pandemic uh, format, uh, the di three different formats of the Iron Base. Uh, today, we're going to focus into the global Iron Base qualifier. Uh, so previously, we had uh, the, the global Iron Base started in 2011, uh, usually uh, had three qualifying rounds. And the winner of its uh, qualifier uh, got a place to the Iron Base uh, championship uh, happening at the Tableau conference. Then uh, 2017, uh, there was a different chapter for IronVis, the IronVis Europe, which ran for three years. Uh, since then, there were no uh, TC Europe's uh, because of uh, COVID. And finally, there's a third version, uh, the, the student edition, which started last year. Uh, and it's happening on December and January. Uh, this one doesn't have a, a final, it's a single qualifying round, uh, a single round basically, uh, where all 
the entries are evaluated uh, and three winners are selected. It only applies to students. So uh, in case you're a student, you might consider uh, looking uh, forward to, to the next student edition uh, next December or January. But let's, uh, let's have a look at what's happening this year. So uh, this year is very similar to last year. We have a single qualifier, uh, but the theme is completely open this year. So it's data and Zoe uh, is what you love. So completely open uh, in contrast to previous years where Tableau uh, gave a specific topic or even sometimes provided the data set that uh, had to be used for IRVs. Uh, I think this opens so many possibilities for, for entries, uh, but we're gonna look at it later. So the official announcement uh, was last Wednesday uh, on the 2nd of June. So we, the time is running already. Uh, the submission of the deadline is the 2nd of July. So there's 23 days and 14 hours, I guess now, uh, left for you to submit your entry. Uh, after that, on the 6th of July, uh, it's the beginning of the evaluation period, which uh, Tim covered before in his presentation. So uh, there would be uh, the, the top 10 visualizations would be picked uh, by the end of July. And then within the next couple of weeks, the qualifier winners would be announced by Tableau. Uh, so this would happen in mid-August, and then uh, the, then we'll have the, the final in November, uh, based on uh, the schedule. This would be virtual again. Uh, and just in case, uh, so what would you need to, to enter the competition? You definitely need to have a Tableau public profile if you don't have one, because all entries uh, should be submitted by a Tableau public. Then uh, that's really sounds simple, but uh, it's really important. You have to register for the competition and submit your views uh, in the link uh, below there uh, to be considered. Um, another rule is that uh, this year we are allowed to have just one uh, entry per person and all, all the entries must be in English. Uh, another rule that has to, has to do with uh, where the, the entries uh, are located. So basically there is a list of countries. Uh, it's, it's called Arabic Global, but yet it's not, and that's because of uh, local laws for uh, competitions run by US companies. So Tableau uh, over the years has tried to expand the number of countries that are eligible to participate. Uh, but we're at this date. So Greece was added first in 2017. Uh, Then the evaluation criteria, uh, as uh, Tim mentioned before, uh, it's design analysis and storytelling. And the, the scores are between zero and five. So if you get like a four, it's really good. Uh, and the tiebreakers are based on the analysis uh, criteria. Uh, the prices for this year competition, you can see them here, they're pretty lucrative. Uh, I think it, it's the same to the last year. So the, the winner uh, will get uh, $10,000 in gas uh, and so will select uh, a nonprofit organization uh, for Tableau to donate another 5K. Uh, and you can see the, the prices for the second and third place as well. All, uh, all of the three winners would get a ticket for TC22. 
um, all the top 10 participants uh, will receive uh, uh, some swag for from the tablet store. Now, uh, that's it with the logistics and uh, let's have a quick look of reasons why you should consider entering RMBs. So the first thing in my opinion is uh, try different things uh, in contrast to what you do probably day in your day-to-day -day job. Uh, experiment with new functionality which you might not be able to, to use at work uh, and learn new things. Uh, and also create uh, something, create a visual for, for a topic that you really consider important and you want to give it some exposure. Uh, and for, this will help you also uh, to enjoy the whole process of building your visual. Uh, the second reason is, uh, might be important for people that are uh, in an early stage of their tablet journey or trying to uh, to build their profile, uh, their portfolio. Um, so it, it's a great opportunity uh, to, to add a, a high quality visualization to your tablet public profile, to also get a, a exposure to the, in the community and uh, get noticed. And this could also uh, offer you uh, professional opportunities in the future. Then another reason would be networking. Uh, okay, now we, we are not allowed to, to attend conferences live, but uh, there are still ways through social media or uh, virtual events uh, that we can get in touch. And uh, in this case, by sharing your, uh, publishing your, uh, sorry, submitting your entry for Iron Bees, uh, many people will, uh, have the opportunity to look at it or download it from Tableau Public and see your uh, the way that you have created your your visual, and this is a great way to to learn from each other because uh, it gets much much more attention than regular uh, regular uh, events organized in the community. Uh, another reason would be to challenge yourself. So many people uh, I have spoken to uh, are looking at uh, what is being submitted for you know, during the Iron Beast qualifiers and feel that they're uh, not at that level, let's say, to, to submit an entry, but that shouldn't be the reason. Uh, we have seen so many examples of people with a uh, very little experience, uh, either uh, having success in the competition. Uh, I could mention uh, Klaus Sult, for example, in 2018, uh, won the uh, the Iron Beast Europe with uh, about a year of experience with Tableau. Kevin Clareds uh, entered the Global Iron Beast Feeders in 2018 uh, with a couple of months of experience, he made it to top 10. And then uh, in 2019, we had uh, Hisa Mesa, I think, I hope I'm not butchering that, uh, who uh, was one of the co-winners of yeah. uh, the Aramis Global uh, with less than six months of experience. So uh, don't get intimidated if you feel uh, that you don't have enough experience, just uh, see that as a competition with your yourself and how you can improve yourself uh, rather than uh, competing with others. Okay, so as a summary of, of the reasons, they all uh, add up to the, to the same point, which is to improve your skills. Uh, and that's a great quote from Ken Flatter. Uh, 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 for anyone who doesn't know Ken, uh, maybe you should uh, Google his, his name. Um, so Ken has really built uh, amazing stuff in 
throughout his Dublin journey, but uh, he still refers to his early early Ireland uh, entries. One of them is the the Killing Fields on the right part of the screen, uh, and the gerrymandering uh, database. Uh, he both uh, created that in 2017 in a very early stage of uh, of his learning curve, and he still. I mean, he entered so many times the competition, but he never made it to the final. But that's not really that's not really important because uh, he learned so many things throughout throughout the process. And I I, I hear that from from almost everyone uh, who has had that experience to to end their feeder. Uh, that the whole process because it it takes much longer that than usual. Uh, Exercises like uh, Makeover Monday or work, Workout Wednesday or uh, other uh, similar uh, community initiatives. Uh, so it gives you the opportunity to to learn so much during the so, so many things during the process. Uh, now uh, I'll try to look into a few things uh, regarding how you should prepare uh, before uh, submitting your entry. Uh, about, I'll start with brainstorming uh, a story. So don't, don't rush into start building something before having a clear idea uh, of what, what you want to build. Uh, so as I said before, it would be really important to, especially now that the, the, the theme is open this year, so it would be really important to focus on something that is important for you, something that you want to uh, to give it uh, some exposure in the community. Uh, but here I have three uh, examples from uh, of great stories of visualizations uh, submitted uh, before by uh, Tristan Gilliving, for example, uh, created uh, this one for uh, Iron V Safari in 2017. I remember uh, Tristan had previously uh, joined, uh, attend, submitted uh, an entry for the, the Iron Viz Europe. Of that year, uh, it's a visualization about uh, a beer consumption in Europe. And so the important uh, takeaway from that was, even though the visual was really good, uh, the feedback you got from the Tableau public team, who the, back then uh, were the judging panel for, for the entries, was uh, that it wasn't really good in terms of the storytelling part. So. He scored very well in uh, analysis and design, but uh, his story yelling was uh, not as strong. So he got back uh, a few months later with uh, this story for the tale of, Re of a rainforest, which uh, uh, has really amazing in terms of uh, the climax of uh, the, the flow of the information. Uh, so it's, uh, it was really, uh, Amazing story back then to to get him the a ticket for Las Vegas in, back in that year. Um, you can see the other entries there from uh, Sarah Butler in 2018, uh, looking at uh, European cities on a budget, and also uh, an amazing story from uh, Ludovic Tavernier in 2018 for. Uh, the prevalence of uh, letter E in uh, books and literature uh, with some really amazing insights there. Yeah, so on the second part, uh, spend some time uh, for your data collection and data preparation. Uh, this is really important to, to create the data set that would support your uh, visualization. Uh, 
don't jump right away and then uh, do a good research, especially this time that uh, the theme is open so you can literacy, literally uh, download uh, freely available data for any topic. Uh, so in this example, I'll share my uh, similar to team. Uh, I, in my entry in 2017, I had created a 14 page story points visualization uh, where I used uh, nine different data sources. Uh, so some of them were even a language they didn't speak, but uh, in that, uh, but uh, they were really important to my, to my uh, analysis. So I needed to download them. Uh, so I never regretted that the time spent to do research and get the right data uh, for the story I wanted to tell. Uh, and I would suggest you to spend enough time, spend the required time on data collection and data preparation. Uh, another thing I wanted to call was uh, the use of text and annotations. So just remember that in this case, you, you can't present or demo your, uh, your entry. Uh, you have to uh, give more context around what you're trying to, uh, to solve uh, what, uh, and how you can effectively use annotations and uh, enough text to provide the, the right context to the audience and also to reveal insights. We, uh, you can see some examples uh, served on the right, which is uh, from Christian Felix. Uh, visualization from, from his entry last year, uh, using uh, reference lines and uh, annotations to show uh, the social uh, capital influence into the spread of COVID by using uh, Apple mobility data. Another example again from last year from Alex Jones, uh, Corana piece. Uh, calling out uh, uh, his uh, different uh, runs. Um, and finally, from Lindsay Poulter, for example, uh, but we all know Lindsay is uh, very elegant on her design, so she would avoid using so much text, but again, she's using. Uh, annotations uh, to draw attention to uh, to the insights on specific points of her visualization uh, for her Iron Music 2019 entry. Uh, now the whole topic I think uh, raised by Angelos previously. Uh, so long form dashboards. Uh, so this trend really emerged around 2017, 2018, and maybe uh, there's a reason for that. So you see the, the three winning entries for last year competition uh, and how long they were. They had all the same format, uh, but based on Angela's question there, if it has to be long form, uh, this is a trend, but it shouldn't be the case. You should decide that based on on the way that you want to uh, tell your story. For example, you can see uh, a different approach taken again the, the last year from uh, Diego Parker. Uh, so in this case, Diego used uh, navigation bot uh, with a horizontal uh, layout it fits in the screen and he is this way to, to navigate throughout his story instead of using a long form. So there are many different, Tableau as a tool provide, provides many different ways to, uh, to arrange your flow, and build a list based on, on 
what do you need and uh, how do you want it to uh, how do you want the information to flow and if it's a screen let's say is uh, is a bit unrelated to the previous one so you you're looking at specific uh, points of your analysis uh, then a different way of navigation uh, might also work very well so it really depends on on your uh, your your reason to, uh, and your story uh, the final question probably is uh, if you need to build complex styles so in these two examples, I'm showcasing uh, some entries from uh, two very technical people, <laughs> uh, former master or Zagovic and Karls and Massa, Luke Stanke. Uh, so in both cases, uh, as I said, uh, it's challenging yourself and uh, for these people, I guess, challenging. Uh, the challenge was to build something uh, that they had never built before. Uh, so this may not be aligned with the, with the evaluate with the evaluation criteria, but uh, that's what made sense for them. Uh, but none of these these was was uh, selected uh, to compete to the final. So it's it's up to you and what what you need to build. But uh, no, complex stars are not necessary. Uh, sometimes sticking with best practices and creating clear visuals uh, that uh, provide insights and the depth of analysis required, then uh, you should be fine. So yeah, uh, just keep it balanced. Uh, across all the evaluation criteria because uh, if let's say you're just good in design and you want to focus on that uh, you create a, a very well designed visualization but your analysis is not strong or your start dating it, it doesn't exist then uh, you won't score too high uh, i haven't seen a visualization that wasn't balanced and uh, good across all the criteria that uh, made the cut so far uh, so that's for me and good luck if you consider to enter i just want to call out uh, there is also an rmvc user group uh, the event is uh, going on on the 15th of june so follow along on the on the link below uh, if you're interested in attending this as well uh, i think uh the speakers are uh, Christian Felix and Sarah Bartlett. So they will share, uh, share the views uh, around the competition and provide tips uh, if you consider entering. Yeah, so that's it from me. Thanks again for bearing with my English and for your valuable time. Amazing. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ethan. This has been a fantastic presentation and I can see that you've put quite a lot of effort in, in the slides you have created. Like some of them, they were like actual visits. So like as a host, I really, really appreciate that. And thank you for the effort you put in that. Um, are there any questions from the audience? No? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, Ethan, do you think that uh, there's there's a need for a practice in terms of speed uh, to do great stuff in a dashboard? Let's say that uh, uh, someone makes it uh, to the final and uh, he has to uh, create a viz from a data set and uh, do all kinds of stuff uh, in, in 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 high speed. Uh, do you think that uh, the the high speed skill may be crucial for the final uh, result yeah good question uh, 
So actually, I don't think this is really important at, at this point. Definitely, depending on what you can build, uh, you will need speed. You will need shortcuts. You will need uh, to save every second. You you, can, you need to save to build your business on the final. But the time that you have now uh, has been extended so much. So I think that uh, it's around four weeks with, with the data. So I believe there is enough time to practice. Uh, while I think uh, this rule changed in 2018, so pre-2018, you were given the data set around three or four days before the final. So uh, back at the end, the, your speed with the tool, uh, I guess, would be, wouldn't need to be much, much more important factor. But yeah, obviously, uh, building something in 20 minutes uh, really needs some speed. So uh, looking yeah. into, into shortcuts and uh, how you can get every second across the, and keep it, keep practicing with your viz uh, after finish, finishing uh, your viz for the final. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the most important thing probably. Yeah, you mean you mean in, in terms of uh, reproducing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and uh, for your bill and presentation. Thank you. I have also a question. It's a rather open one. Uh, you also mentioned data prep uh, and spend some time doing data prep and pay attention to collecting the right data. Um, Assuming that you don't have access to a data prep software, how can a participant do the data preparation stage of, of, it, of his viz? Because yeah. assuming you don't have Tableau prep. Well, yeah, if you, don't, if you don't have Tableau prep, I think you can get a trial version for it for a couple of yeah. weeks, which should be enough at least enough. to use it for the competition. Uh, if you don't have any skills in any uh, data prep languages as well. You don't know Python, you don't know R. Um, there are also other free tools available, but I guess uh, you would, in any case, need some time to, um, to learn the, the tool before uh, using it. So if you don't know uh, any way to prepare your data, uh, you can work with uh, predefined data sets uh, that you can find on the web. Uh, you can still, this shouldn't, shouldn't really, uh, you can see it as an exercise as well, I think. So if you want to get uh, skills on data prep, you can use uh, the RMVs contest as, a, as an opportunity to, um, to start practicing uh, the tool, as we said before, with Tableau prep, you can download the trial and start using it. Uh, but I think it, it gives you um, to have a prep, well, well prepped and clean data set. Uh, it's really important for the outcome. Got it. Yeah, I think I think myself, I'm spoiled to data prep software. And then I was trying to do stuff in Tableau Public and I struggled. Oh, on Tableau, okay. sorry. And I struggled. And then I was thinking, what if I wanted to apply, like just create a, a viz for iron viz and i don't have access to data prep software what am i supposed to do uh, but I, i'm i'm the spoiled one so i, I wanted some hints yeah uh, yeah pandas code is a only suggestion maybe but i have to 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 learn some python thank you thank you ethan thank you really much thank you very much thank you yeah okay if that made sense so um yeah uh it's uh half past six in the UK, half past eight in Greece, and it's time for us to round it up. So let me present my screen again for the final couple of slides. So uh, that was uh, it for today. Uh, thank you very much for um, staying with us, and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, this year competition um, is on things or uh, what you love. So it's free and you can go on and create your visualization. The submission deadline is the 9th of July. And from our side, what we wanted to do 
is ask you if you want to follow us on LinkedIn. And you can also, uh, you can find the links to our LinkedIn page in the chat. And you can also um, become a member of our LinkedIn group where all the conversation goes on. Um, in our groups, we want to ask to share your data story and your data experience, your Tableau experience for other members of the user group to learn from you, uh, tips and tricks and other things, uh, you valuable things you know about Tableau. And also, if you want to hear from us in the future, then please uh, add the Splash webpage in your whitelist so you can receive those emails. Again, all those links have been posted for you uh, in the chat. That was it for me. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you next time, I assume, uh, in September and enjoy your summer holidays.